Hello, everybody. I am Anna Bryce, the VP of Programming at the AMA Phoenix, and welcome. And we are very excited to bring you this presentation because I know a, a lot of people are excited to be here today. Uh, what marketers need to know to get ahead in today's job market. And um, so much going on <laughs> this past year. Uh, I think everybody's really embracing learning something new. I'm going to just quickly go through um, a couple of things and then I'm gonna hand over to Evelyn Vega who is going to introduce our speaker. speaker. So uh, we would like to thank our sponsors. And again, we, we can't thank them enough because they help make everything possible uh, that we do. I would particularly like to thank uh, Taylor Wellman, who is our host today from Financial Potion. If you have any video needs, please consider giving Taylor a call and you can always email me and I can uh, connect the two of you. And we also would like to thank our supporters, which are the companies that uh, employ our board members. And with their support, it allows us to do the really hard work that everybody does. So we thank them. And I just want to get right into uh, getting started. So Evelyn, if you would take it over <laughs> and introduce our speaker, we are very excited to hear from Michelle. Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, so I'm really excited to present Michelle Robin to you. Um, she's done a, a lot of presentations for the American Marketing Association across the country. So I'm excited that she can do that here for us in Phoenix. So a little bit about Robin. So after 20 years as a marketing professional, it came naturally for Michelle to create marketing programs that would help her clients stand out in their noisy competitive mark niches. While working in corporate marketing and graphic design, direct marketing, and then product management, she did it all from concept to production. Towards the end of her tenure in corporate marketing, she started the side job writing resumes because it fit well within her marketing and graphic design background, and she could also use her writing skills from her journalism degree. She found helping clients get over their fears related to career advancement quite fulfilling to a point that she would go on record saying that she was a bit of a job search geek. So, and she, she just loved doing the job strategy. It was just fun for her, right? So she created um, Brand Your Career, which is a company that specializes in helping marketing leaders like you discover your personal brand, create your positioning and transform your mindset for career success. We're really excited about this because this is our first career development um, program that we've had all year. And so we hope to bring more like a more of this type of um, information to all of you throughout the year. So please um, help me by welcoming uh, Michelle Robin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Evelyn. And uh, you gave a really good backstory of how I got into what I'm doing today. So I appreciate that. Um, and it is something like I, I was a job search geek before I started doing this business. Uh, I was the weirdo that liked job search. So hence the reason I'm doing what I do today. And I know for many of you, uh, it is not the case that you love job search. It's not fun. It's very frustrating. And these days, you know, things, things are different, right? Uh, we've had a pandemic and there's all sorts of things going on in today's world that was not like this, you know, 15 months ago or so. So what I wanna to talk to you guys about today is what marketers need to get ahead in today's job market, because it's really unlike you know, anything we've seen before, but what you're gonna hear about and how to get ahead will really help your career, whether you're looking for jobs or not, because I believe in proactive career management and that's how you get the best opportunities going forward in your career. So here's the game plan for today. We're gonna to talk about the state of the job market. So a little bit more on that in just a second. I want to talk to you about what career autopsies are versus career fitness programs. And there is a difference in what you should be doing. 
Then we're going to talk about how to embrace the mindset of becoming the CEO of brand you, because that's really key in order to move your career forward, how to communicate your value to potential employers so you can land the right job, not just any job, even if you've never had that title before. And it's possible and it's possible in today's market. So I want I want to be positive about that. I want to talk to you about how to attract your ideal employer, even when opportunities might seem limited, which I think we're finally kind of coming out of this, uh, you know, limited opportunities with the pandemic as things are opening up across the country. And then how to get paid what you're worth, even if you're being paid under market value now. And last but not least, how to build your confidence in networking so you can uncover some of these hidden opportunities without feeling like you're begging for a job and uncover opportunities maybe before they even hit those job boards. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So with no further ado, the state of today's job market. So as the pandemic subsides, there are studies that have shown that one in four employees plan to leave their employer. And this is what Sherm is calling a turnover tsunami. So there's plenty of opportunities out there between this turnover that's happening and between uh, companies that are feeling more confident about the economy and where things are going now that we are in kind of post-pandemic mode, um, getting, getting closer and closer to, I don't even want to say normal, but going back to, to different, right? Not exactly what it was, you know, in early 2020, but, but things will be, you know, at least we'll be gathering in groups and in person someday, someday soon. So that's one thing. Uh, that's playing into this and makes a very competitive market. And then I thought it was another interesting fact is this uh, data is from Jobvite. They did a study of, of job seekers and 23% of the unemployed have been looking for more than a year. So that reiterates this really tough competitive market. And then 69% of those surveyed for that Jobvite survey believe that getting a job in 2021 is going to be much harder than it was before the pandemic. And I agree with them that they're right. It's, it's a competitive market. Employers kind of have their choice. So we're going to be talking today about how, how to fix that. What can you do for your career to make you stand out? And that's why I want to share with you the difference between a career autopsy and a career fitness program. Career autopsy, when you think autopsy, it's like a once and done thing right? And it's like just the facts. So if you think of it in terms of your career, it's saying like, here's what I did. This is where I did it. And that was that, <laughs> right? It's, it's very concise and, and just kind of boring, frankly. Um, and it's not really future thinking, right? Because it's, it's looking only at the past. It's not looking at where you're going. As opposed to a fitness program, when you think about a fitness program, like if you're getting healthy and trying to lose weight or build up muscle, you're content, you're looking forward, right? You're, you're working towards a goal and then you're constantly uh, doing actions that will help you reach that goal. And that's the same kind of thing that you have to approach your career to. Um, and that's pot, you know, proactive career management is doing things that are gonna help your career out in the future. And also looking out at where you want, want to go in the future so you can kind of, you know, steer your career versus being kind of just letting it happen to you. So that's the real difference. And I want to, you guys to embrace that career fitness program starting today. And, and you're all around the call today. And that's the first step forward. So let's do a really quick career audit to see kind of where people are at. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And that are kind of the five challenges that I see a lot of employees dealing with today. So feel free to jump in the chat and say yes, if any of these things apply to you. So number one, do you feel like you're great at performing your job, but too often, like no one recognizes your work? So you feel like if I put my head down and do all my work, for sure, I'm going to get that promotion or for sure, I'll be able to get that next opportunity, yet nothing really happens, right? So that's what I call the climber syndrome is is you're trying to get ahead, but you keep coming up against roadblocks. And then you hear excuses, oh, it's a glass ceiling, or oh, they never promote anyone, or, or, or all those kinds of excuses start coming into your head and it adds to unhappiness at, at your current employer, employer. Sorry. Number two, are you tired of feeling undervalued and want to get paid what you're worth? So a lot of times people are doing a whole lot of work and not getting, you know, 
not getting enough pay for it. And then they start to, you know, you start to feel that frustration and it's not fun. And it's, or, or the other part of this is you're working in a place where they just don't get marketing, right? Like you're the only marketer. And so they don't often understand things and you're not getting budget approved. And then that also kind of adds to this value syndrome, right? You're not being valued for what you do and you're not being paid for what you do. Um, the value that you could bring to an organization because they don't view marketing as, as all that important. All right, so then number three, you know, do you have a micromanager or work in a space that maybe you feel is a toxic environment and yet you feel like you can't escape? You're like, oh, I just got to deal with this because, you know, I got to pay my bills or, or maybe it's going to get better. Maybe if I weed it out, it'll get better. Um, maybe I, I'll be able to move somewhere else within the company um, or things like that. And, but it, in the meantime, what's it doing to your health? You know, what's it doing to your mental state? That, that's what I call a toxic syndrome. And then number four, do you feel bored or no longer challenged at work and suddenly start wondering, you know, how the heck did I get here? Like you just kind of wake up one day and you're like, huh, this isn't as fun as I used to think it was. <laughs> right. Um, and you start second guessing what you want to do when you want to grow up, right? <laughs> what do I do when I grow up? And then you're already like 35, 40 years old and you're like, this, I should have figured it out by now. So you're not alone there. That This is what I call a switcher syndrome is maybe, maybe I need to switch careers. Maybe I need to switch industries. Something isn't satisfying me, right? So I want to switch and get out of it. That's what the switcher syndrome is. And then number five, do you feel trapped by these golden handcuffs? because you're never gonna have the same pay or the same benefits or the same flexibility that you enjoy now. And so this is what I call the, the prisoner syndrome. And it can kind of, it, this is like, well, things are good enough, right? Um, or I don't believe that I can ever find something better because my boss is really nice. But at the same time, you're, you're experiencing maybe some of these other syndromes underneath, like, well, I'm not really sure I like what I'm doing anymore, but hey, they pay me well. Um, that's part of that prisoner syndrome. So I have good news for you guys. Good news is all of these problems and syndromes can be resolved. And they are, get resolved when you have a proven career management strategy system, right? That career fitness program that I talked about earlier. That's what's going to... That's what you need to take in order to move your career forward fast and finally get, you know, that six figure, you know, marketing job or your next six figure marketing job. And the cure is these five shifts. And these shifts that I'm going to go over in just a minute here are not only going to help you with this job change, but every subsequent career move after that. They're going to allow you to take charge of your career, right? Be the CEO of brand you. And all my clients make these shifts in order to achieve their success. And once they make these shifts, these are some of the things that you can look forward to. You can realize that selling yourself is possible and you're gonna have a steady stream of interviews that you're really excited about, not just, um, you know, maybe, maybe it might work out. No, you're gonna be excited about these. They're gonna be the right match. And your age or your lack of industry experience is no longer gonna be a hindrance, but an asset to your job search. And the good news is employers are finally getting on board with this. 25% of people have been switching industries in the last year, so that's good. Um, your network is gonna expand. Referrals are gonna start coming in for your ideal job. That attraction, right? Jobs are gonna be coming to you. And you're gonna be able to command the salary that you deserve and enjoy the opportunity for that continuous career growth and compounding that salary so your marketplace value even increases more. And last but not least, you're going to be able to, you know, spend your days, you, you won't have to spend your days dreaming about this ideal job because you're going to be in your ideal job. You're going to be living that. So that's the outcome you get when you make these five shifts. So let's jump in to shift number one. So shift number one is be your number one fan. And this might sound kind of funny. <laughs> you're like, okay, yeah, I, I, I get it. I like myself. But here's the thing, especially with marketers that I've seen is marketers, they're, they're great at marketing their company and their, their products and their services, right? Because those are like tangible things and it's not them. When marketers try to you know, market themselves, it's almost like everything they knew about marketing goes out the window because we're human, right? It's a much more emotional, uh, emotional pro process 
Um, cause, because we're human and we have emotions and you're trying to put yourself out there, that's a lot of vulnerability that, that, that you have to put out there and people aren't comfortable with that. Then the voices start in your head. Oh, you're not good enough. Oh, so-and-so told me I'd never get promoted. <laughs> you know, like all these kinds of stories that go in our head that sabotage you moving forward in your career. And those experiences lead to what your unconscious mind is telling you that that's where those thoughts are stemming. And that's what turns into limiting beliefs. And limiting beliefs are things like, my network is useless. No one ever gets back to me when they said they would. Or maybe I should just feel lucky to have a job, right? This It's a competitive market. Unemployment's higher than it, it's been in a really long time. Or maybe it's the excuses start kicking in. I'm never gonna get these kinds of perks again. Um, no one's ever going to hire me, like any, any kinds of excuses. Those are all signs of limiting beliefs. And it's really tough to like overcome these things if you don't believe in yourself first and know that without a doubt, you are the best person for that job. It's just like getting behind a product that you're passionate about. It's way easier to market that, right? It's the same kind of thing, you know, in job search, you got to be passionate about marketing yourself. And one other mind shift that I want to share with you is that you are no longer at the mercy of your employer. Your career is in your hands and you need to embrace that and believe it. And everything in your career doesn't happen at work. If you're not getting the experience that you need at work, go volunteer. The AMA is a great place to volunteer and get some experience. And I'm sure a lot of people on this call will, will vouch for that or, or some other organization uh, that you're passionate about. Maybe they need marketing help. You can go and get you know, that experience there. And when you make this mind shift, it, it ends those excuses, all those thoughts that were going in your head from that last slide. Um, when you make these shifts, believing that you are in charge of your career and not your employer, and that you can do things to move ahead and that you're in more control of the job search than you think you are, then that's the key to, to landing a job in this very competitive market. So I wanna share a quick case study with you about my client, Rebecca. So Rebecca came to me, she was significantly underpaid for what she was doing. Um, she was a manager, but it was she was doing director level work and was not getting paid for it. And her confidence was totally shot. She had actually come to me and said, oh no, I can't do the program. And a whole year went by. And then she came back and said, I've had no progress. So, you know, doing it on her own was, was really tough. And then she doubled down and, and did shift number one of believing in herself and built back her confidence. And she was actually able to like double her salary and, and land a new job in just about six months and finally break into that six figure mark. So that's what the outcome that you can get when you start embracing these shifts. So number two shift is ditch your resume. Now, this might sound funny coming from someone that has a dual certification in resume writing, where I'm like, yeah, I'll just throw it out the window. Um, I don't mean literally throw it out the window, but don't think of your resume first. And here's, here's what happens a lot. Uh, we, a lot of things that happen is, is like career drift. And what I mean by this is you get tired of where you are, so you just kind of take the next thing that comes along, right? Oh, I threw my resume out there and I got this job. Or... Uh, maybe someone tapped on tapped you on the shoulder and some opportunity fell in your lap. But you're doing this without any plan. And that's what I mean by ditch the resume. You've got to have a plan. It's the biggest mistake that I see job seekers of any industry make, you know, not just marketers, all job seekers. They start their job search by, oh, got to update the resume and get that out there. And they don't think about where they want to go next. And that is just super key, especially in the competitive market. So here's some ways that you can think about, you know, proactive career management. Uh, one of these is to keep a career journal. And in that journal, there's two parts. One of them should be for your CAR stories. And if you're not familiar with the CAR acronym, it stands for challenge, action, and results. So you want to document um, all of your uh, projects as you go along, right? And, and then you're going to have all this documentation, you're not going to have to go like, oh, how, how did that campaign go? I'm not really sure what the return on investment was, um, or I don't remember exactly why we did it. So if you don't write down those kinds of things, then you're left kind of, you know, scratching your head and digging through old reviews and papers that you may or may not have. 
Um, so always keep a career journal with, with active stories. When you finish a project, jot down those three things. What was the challenge that I was uh, faced with? What actions did I take? And what were the results that we got? And then the other part of the career journal is about career management. So ask yourself questions. Uh, where do I see myself in the next step in order to get to the director level role or CMO role or whatever role you want, even if it's not moving up, maybe it's getting more responsibilities. Um, so what skills do I need to get to that place? And am I spending my you know, time on the right things to get there? If this gives you the roadmap of what you need to do in order to move to that next position so you're not suffering from career drift anymore. So that's number one. Number two is, is defining your target of where you want to go. So what industry, what size, organization, the type of culture, uh, what kind of title do you want? Who do you want to report to? Yeah, do you want to be a manager or an individual contributor? There's plenty of individual contributor roles that are six figures. So it's not just on, on a management uh, scale that you need to do in order to get that, that uh, six figure salary. What types of challenges do you like solving? You know, and do you want to solve? Those all go into your, your target employer. And for my client, Javier, he had kind of gotten into this career drift, right? He was in a place he was comfortable, kind of the prisoner syndrome, but just wasn't like admitting it. <laughs> he was totally in what he own, said his own words. He said, I was dangerously complacent. He wasn't doing anything to move his career forward, but he wasn't doing anything, you know, to, he was just kind of plateaued. So what he really enjoyed and looked forward to was having this inbound opportunities, having opportunities come to him. And so when we started working together, he was able to you know, beef up his network and, and have this career toolkit that gave him a resource and have that career journal going. And it, what he ended up doing was getting a 17% raise, which is really huge. You usually don't see that much of an internal jump when you, when you get a, a promotion. So that's what you can do when you have a plan. All right, so shift number three is stand out or die. And I don't mean to be morbid, but it's ultra competitive, if I haven't said that enough already. It's an ultra competitive uh, job market. So if you're not doing something to make yourself stand out and, and be different from everyone else, then, then you are gonna die. You're just gonna die a slow death. <laughs> so don't do that. And just to review, like I'm sure a lot of you are doing job search this way. The, you know, the traditional way, which I think of as push marketing. And, you're probably searching on job boards four to six hours a day. You're sending out resumes. You're, you're attending networking events, you know, one to two times a week. They're still happening even in COVID. You're all here on this call. You know, you ask friends if they have any jobs. Hey, you know, any marketing opportunities? You know, uh, then you're sending out hundreds of resumes and you're tweaking every keyword. You ask recruiters to keep an eye out for you. And then after all that work, you only get like a 1% or less response rate. I don't know about you, but I'm not about the 1% response rate. That's a lot of work for not a lot of action. <laughs> so the new way of thinking about your job search is more of the poll marketing. So an employer does a search and you come up in the results. And I don't always mean this literally online, but if you have the right keywords in your LinkedIn profile and you're, and you're thinking about where you wanna go in, in the future, back to that career fitness program, then that's going to be, you know, a really advantageous for you to come up in results, in search results online. And then there's also results about coming up when, you know, when an opening is first getting discussed internally at a company, first thing that people do go, oh, well, do you know anyone who, and they fill in that blank, you know, do you know anyone who can, uh, who's really great at social media and SEO and SEM? So, oh yeah, that's my friend, Susie. You know, that's what I mean by your name comes up in the results. It's not just online, it's also that verbal. And that's what happens when you can kind of attract that job offer to you and have these proactive, um, proactive career management in order to move your career ahead. So the key to doing this, my secret weapon is what I call your attractive hiring proposition. It's basically a USP for you. <laughs> And the first thing to do in order to develop this attractive hiring proposition is set a target, just like we talked about in shift number, number two. Then you wanna identify your unique strengths. 
What's easy for you? What unique combination of skills do you have that makes you different? And then you want to align those strengths with the target that you set. And that's where the magic happens. And you're, when you're doing this, you're providing evidence that threat, that common thread throughout your career. So you can show up and say, hey, the common threads in my career are perseverance. I'm never afraid to try new things. And um, I just, ha I love, you know, SaaS marketing and, and this is what I've done, right? So you can, you can have that kind of attractive hiring proposition and what makes you different by developing all these things. Now, my client, Kelly, she, she had this broad experience. She had actually quit her job after 18 year tenure in the financial services industry. And she had both sales, marketing and operations experience. And she wasn't getting any, well, she got a little traction in her job search, but, but everyone was kind of confused. <laughs> Um, as to what exactly she would be doing next. And so she wasn't able to land something. So once we started working together, she was able to actually change industries and landed a VP job in like less than two months. And the way she found her job was someone found her on LinkedIn. So that search pulled her in and she got the job. So that's what doing all this work can, can help you do. Because once you start to attract and engage, you set yourself apart from your competition and you're no longer all things to all people. And then, um, you know, you make a memorable impression with your hiring manager. They're, they're like, oh, yeah, I remember that, that guy. Um, he was really great. And I think he'd fit in here great. And then when you can, can convey what is unique about you and valuable valuable about you, that allows you to negotiate a higher salary because guess what? You know, things that people perceive of, ooh, only Michelle can do that or ooh, only, you know, Amanda can do that. Guess what? They're going to pay Michelle and Amanda, you know, top dollar in order to get them in and help solve their problem. And then that also allows you when you keep this mentality going forward to make yourself shine in that role and, you know, set the, set the pace for the next promotion. And I know it's weird thinking about a promotion on your first day of a new job, but you got to plan ahead. So shift number four is connect consistently. You've probably heard the ABCs of selling is always be closing, right? Which we can debate on whether that's a really good thing or not, but we're not here to talk about sales. In career management, I like to say always be connecting. And this is important regardless if you're in job search right now or not because relationships are everything and your network is highly, highly valuable. Um, the most effective source of hires, and this was from a job bite survey, is actually from the hiring manager. So the majority of people aren't going through the hiring manager. In fact, this more recent uh, job bite, job seeker nation study showed how workers found their last job. And you can see job boards is, is the most, how people found their jobs. And friends or former colleagues is only 18%. But really what worried me was this was a 5% drop from the previous year. Why people are using this less, I don't know when it's like 19 times more effective. They have a more effective hire when someone gets referred in. It's just, it, it's just the way things go because people like to hire people that they know, like, and trust. It makes total sense. And if you don't do this, then, you know, you get put in the pool of everyone else. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in that pool. I don't want to be just like every, every other marketer out there. I'm unique. I have, you know, unique experiences that no one else has had. And that makes me the best person for this job because, and you got to know the answer to that question when you're interviewing. Otherwise, you're going to be forever stuck in the black hole of recruiting, a slave, slave to tweaking your resume for every keyword. That's no fun, right? That's, that's what makes job search not fun. And you're going to be forced to you know, settle for a job that's not your ideal fit. Well, I guess it was the only offer I had, so I had to take it. Um, and you're going to continue to move to, you know, the rest of your career in this manner if you don't consistently connect with people. And I know it's scary, right? People are like, oh, networking, that makes me feel dirty. There's been studies shown that it literally makes people feel dirty. They associate the word soap after um, ask, being asked about networking that they want to you know, clean themselves afterwards. So here's ways that you can consistently connect and not feel dirty about it. 
you need to give before you get. And a lot of people in transition are like, eh, what do I have to give? I'm not employed right now. A, you have your network. B, you have your knowledge. Your knowledge didn't go away. Your job might have gone away, but your knowledge didn't go away. How can you help someone out? And it doesn't always have to be career related. Maybe you're um, it's probably not as applicable today, but the thought that's coming in my head is maybe, maybe you're a guru on getting points for airlines and people are traveling. Um, so you can share that kind of knowledge. Um, you can also work your weak ties, like especially former colleagues or old uh, friends from college, because they don't run in the same circles and they may know someone that could be a really good person for you to get connected to. So that's another way to connect. And your network is often bigger than you think. Uh, even your hairdresser or your accountant, that they, they have a wide network of people. You never think about talking to them. So connect to those kinds of people and then nurture your connections. Don't just connect people and, and go away. And there's all sorts of great ways to connect these days, whether it's you know on Zoom, it doesn't have to be in person. Lunch Club is a great tool that I've found for connecting people. Um, if they make an introduction, circle back to them and say, hey, thanks for that intro. Here's what we talked about. What else can I do for you? Like nurture those relationships. So my client, Gail, uh, she came to me right at the beginning of, of COVID last year. She had gotten furloughed initially and then laid off. She worked in the restaurant industry and she networked like crazy and, and built her network, made all sorts of new connections and how she found this job, which actually was in the restaurant industry, um, was she had reached out to someone uh, where they had a common bond. They had both lost parents or something along those lines. And, and that person remembered her and said, hey, did you hear about this opportunity? So that's how those relationships happen. And it allowed Gail to land a job with a 30% increase in salary and finally break into that six figures. Um, so she's just over the moon about the opportunity that she has. It's so much better than, than where she was before. So that's what happens when you can connect consistently. And the last shift is don't go it alone. So it takes a village to find a job, uh, just like we were talking about you know, in, in the careers, or sorry, in, in the connections. But when you have someone that can guide you or mentor you through it, they help you get yourself aware of what you're strengths and weaknesses are, get you clarity on where you're going, then help you shift those mindset beliefs that we talked about in shift number one about being your number one fan to build up your confidence and steer you towards taking the right action in order to get the outcome that you want. That's how you know a mentor or a coach or a consultant can help you. And there's a real cost of job search if you, if you don't do this. Uh, job search is taking much longer even than just a year ago. Um, I was just looking at the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, 59% of unemployed people are taking 15 plus weeks now versus only 30% in 2020. And of that 59%, 43% are taking over 27 weeks. So that's a long time. If you're making $120,000 a year, let's just use that for easy math, that's $10,000 a month that's not coming in. So 15 plus weeks, you're already like at four months, 27 weeks is more like six months. So are you willing to lose $60,000 if you don't, you know, get some help along the way in your, in your job search? And even if you're employed, there's still a cost to job search because typically you don't get a 17% promotion raise in, in your job. It's usually what a 3%, 5% um, increase in salary. So if you don't actually switch employers, then over the long term of your career, just like this uh, graph shows, is people that remain in their job longer don't make as much money overall. So keep that in mind that there, it is a cost to job search. So my client, Carmen, now she had gotten laid off and had that lack of confidence and her materials were generic. And she applied all these five shifts in order to build up her confidence get her attractive hiring proposition, and she became an interview machine. And it enabled her to move from a director level position to an executive level position. And it was just a huge, a huge leap. And she found that through her network. So she you know, wasn't even applying anymore. It, it was really 
putting these five shifts together for her was eye-opening and has allowed her to continue on moving her career forward. So today, just to review what I promised, I promised that I would show you how to embrace the mindset of becoming the CEO of Brandu. I told you how to communicate your potential uh, to an employer so you can land the right job, not just any job, even if you haven't had that title before, just like Carmen went from director to executive. And then, you know, how to attract your ideal employer, even when opportunities might seem limited or might seem hard to reach because of the competitive market. And how to get paid what you're worth, even if you're being paid under market value now. And how to boost your confidence at networking, even uh, so you can uncover those hidden opportunities without feeling like you're begging for a job. And what you need to win are the five shifts. And just to review, number one is be your number one fan. And two, ditch your resume, get that plan in place, do proactive career management, right? Number three, stand out or die, work on developing that attractive hiring proposition and feel confident delivering it. Number four, connect consistently so you can uncover opportunities and have more opportunities come to you too. And then don't go it alone. So now you've got a choice. You can apply what I've been talking about today, or you can keep doing the same traditional methods of job search and having a long drawn out 27 plus week job search because things are competitive and it's really tough to stand out when you don't have some help in that third neutral party helping you, you know, repeat mirror back to you what's going on. So I have an invitation for all of you. I'd like to invite you to a brand to land strategy session, totally complimentary. I've set aside some time in the next few days to speak to you personally about what your biggest roadblocks are because chances are I've seen it and I know how to overcome it. And the cost is absolutely free. You can book a call with me at brandercareer.com slash call. And this is really for people that are marketing leaders who have had success. So you have those ROI, you have some quantifiable accomplishments that you know you've made an impact throughout your career and you must be willing to think different and you must be committed and resourceful and willing to take action now. That's really important is to take action now. And if this is you, go ahead and book a session. I would love to talk to you and brainstorm. And why I'm doing this is we're gonna really have a heart to heart conversation about your career. I guarantee you it'll be the best 60 minutes you spend on your career. And, and we're gonna ask you some questions that even, you know, no one else has probably asked you to help real, you realize what might be keeping you stuck. And if you want us to help you and we think it's a good fit, we may invite you in to become one of our new clients that we take on this month. So again, go to brandercareer.com slash call. Happy to have that call with you and explore. And I guarantee you'll walk away even with some nuggets if we don't move forward too. So with that, I would love to open it up for questions and see where you guys are all at in your career and how can I help? Wonderful. Thank you so much. Let's start by just giving Michelle a nice little round of applause. So much information. I had quite a few questions come in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and ask a few questions. So is there any special advice for those 23% who have been looking for a job for over a year of just what could they do differently now? Yeah, I think what you can do differently now, it's always good to, I think, like, let's start from scratch. Let's get rejuvenated about your whole entire job search. What is that target? How can I think about doing things differently? Um, what tips did you learn in today's presentation about career management to, to think about how you're presenting yourself differently? Um, are there new people to talk to? Uh, even on this, on this call today, network with some people here just to get some ideas. Um, and and to also take time for yourself, because I know it's really draining <laughs> to like get rejection after rejection and just feel down. So whatever you can do to like, whether it's working out, going to, you know, get a haircut or <laughs> makeup done for the ladies on the call, um, go for a run, <laughs> uh, do those kinds of things. So you don't feel like you're just sucked into doing job search. 24 seven, because it can take a toll. So make sure that you're doing things for yourself too, to rejuvenate and, and just, you know, take a day of, of a pause. Maybe there's a day you don't apply to any jobs at all and you rethink everything and it, it'll give you a whole fresh new perspective. Good question. 
And then what's the best way to find out who's hiring and what jobs are currently available? Um, it was mentioned that many times LinkedIn is not as accurate as they maybe would like. So where would be the places that you would recommend to go? Um, I would recommend looking at your target companies and trying to um, trying to see who you can connect to there to see what get the get the inside scoop. Um, you can also you know read the trade journals, you know, and, and read even the news of what's going on because thinking about the pandemic, I'm going to use Zoom as an example. No one heard of Zoom a year ago, right? Um, I did because I'm an entrepreneur and, and we tended to use that, but no, most of the world had never heard of Zoom. They've had incredible growth over the past year. So look at those companies that have, you know, really skyrocketed because of the pandemic, like e-commerce companies, digital marketing, all those, all those areas are on the rise. So that's another way to figure out where people might be hiring to, is to just watch the news and what's going on to see what industries are thriving. So then would you recommend researching and then actually just reaching out to the hiring manager of whichever job they're most interested in? Yeah, definitely. Um, reach out to someone on LinkedIn. Um, it's always better to get an introduction. So if you can, if you can network your way in better, but if you, you know, tried and can't find anyone, um, you can start following them on LinkedIn, comment on posts that they have, reach out and do a connection. Um, say, hey, I'd just like to, don't ask them for the job. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you all know that. <laughs> you shouldn't just say, hey, do you have a job? Um, but, you know, find your potential hiring manager on LinkedIn and follow them and comment on them, on, on their posts um, and get a conversation going. Um, and then the other thing that you can do um, is when you're reaching out cold, offer up your network. And once they accept, that's the next step where you start building that relationship. Well, so, you know, I'm really curious to learn about ABC company. How did you get there? Make it about them. Don't make it about you. And you'll be much more likely to have that conversation be continued. Excellent. And then how can we deal with the must have five years experience in X industry issue? Ah, uh, that's a challenge. Um, the good news on that front is um, there was just an article in, I believe it was Hunt, Hunt Scanlon is a, if you go to huntscanlon.com, it's a recruiter focused uh, website. They help out recruiters, but they had an article that was talking about the shifts to hiring skills over experience. And companies, there are some companies that are having talent shortages, believe it or not, with all this unemployment. Um, and mainly, I think it's because they're being too picky. So if they, if companies can open up their minds, there's, it's a lot, there's a lot of benefits in it for them. And I think companies are starting to see this um, when they open up their minds to hiring for skills versus experience because you may have great skills at, let's just say SEO or SEM, um, but maybe you only have two or three years experience and they're looking for five. Well, what other transferable skills do you have that can be beneficial to them? That's, that's what I would start looking at. Don't, don't, don't not apply to a job because that's the one thing that's missing. Um, you just never know. And the good news is from that article is, is companies are starting to wake up to this and they're starting to look at more skills-based hiring than experienced hiring. So keep, keep trying and persevere. <laughs> Wonderful. And we have someone here who is looking to move to a different state, but they don't have a network out there. So what would be your thoughts and suggestions around that? Um, to me, it's, it's no, no different. Uh, the internet is a great thing. Um, Lunch club is a great way to meet people from a new city. I think you might even be able to specify um, some things about what the type of people that you want to meet. Um, you can even use LinkedIn and, and search for people by area and try to see who's out in that area that you want to move to, um, to start building the net. And you build those relationships the same way as I've been talking about. It's no different if they're out, you know, out of your city or not. Um, in fact, that gives you uh, an opening. Hey, I'm moving to, or I want to move to, um, I want to move to San Francisco or wherever you want to move to. 
um, and I see you're out there. Can you tell me a little bit more about the city and what you do? It, it's, it's, it's a conversation starter in a way. So in a way it's almost easier. You've got that going for you. Excellent. I was wondering if you could quickly run through the common thread again. Uh, we had some people who came in a little late. And I had some people comment how, how amazing that was, you know, so if you could review that again, I'd appreciate that. Yeah. So the common threads of your career, like, like for me, if I was out there job seeking, my common threads are perseverance. I'm unafraid to try new things. And, and I love processes. <laughs> And I can give examples of all those things in my career. And, and my ability to not be afraid of trying new things has allowed me to move from graphic designer to direct marketer, to product manager, to entrepreneur. So you wanna be able to tell that story and, and like have a storyline around it. So like I just did about saying, well, here's my ability to not be afraid to try new things allowed me to do this and then for processes, I've got a story around processes. I've got a story around perseverance. I've, I've been an entrepreneur for eight years. <laughs> it, it, you've got to have perseverance to keep that up. So that's what I mean by finding the common threads that are like unique to you. Like what do you, when you look back on your career, what are the things that people always ask you to do? What are the things that you love doing? And what are the things like you know, I did X at, at this company and I turned around, I did X again at this company. So looking back at your career and, and looking for those things in order to find the common threads. Awesome. And you said, you know, your number one tip is to become your number one fan. So what is your number one tip for increasing confidence and becoming your own number one fan? Um. I think a really good tip is to look back on any kinds of thank yous you've ever gotten, um, any kinds of recommendations you've gotten on LinkedIn, um, any kinds of uh, positive reviews you've had. I know I literally I have a filing cabinet behind me here and I actually have my old work reviews um, just to, to kind of like go, oh yeah, so-and-so did think I was awesome mm -hmm. because a lot of times it's so easy to get down on yourself. So the more evidence that you can have your mind remember, then the more likely you're going to be able to boost your confidence and, and feel good about what you've accomplished. Excellent tip. Well, those are all the questions that I had. So if anyone else has any questions, please feel free at this point to unmute yourself. Go ahead and ask Michelle the question. Let's make the most of the time that we um, have with her. And I'll stop the share so I can see people too. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? Otherwise I, I do. <laughs> All right, then I'll ask my question. So Michelle, in terms of the common thread, I think one of the things that I usually do might fall under that. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're sitting in an interview, the interviewer literally says, okay, tell me about yourself. <laughs> and, um, and the story that I tell in how I got into marketing was I originally started in the travel industry and then I moved to Sony Electronics and was still in the travel division. But then when I moved to marketing, I talked to some people, some people helped me a lot. And then I specifically started in a marketing coordinator job, then went to a associate marketing manager job, then a marketing manager job. So I always tell the story of the progression. I tell the story about who helped me, who talked to me, who gave me advice. Um, I had an HR person who saw my resume, knew me from my present job and offered to spend an hour with me to revamp my resume. So of course I jumped at that. And then the job that I took as a marketing coordinator, which is a very low level position, was a marketing services department. So I got to see how every marketing department in this Sony division worked. And I thought it was the perfect starting point. Um, so I think that's a common thread kind of a story. Yeah, it's a common thread. I mean, definitely shows your progression and getting into the marketing services. That could be something that's unique about you, Anna, is because I worked in this area, 
Right. I know enough to be dangerous about all these other things. So maybe that positions you for a marketing director role because a director has to be over all those kinds of things. Right. So yeah. it's, it's, it's fine tuning that and getting your story down to 60 to 90 seconds. Right. And that I wanted to learn something at each level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So learner, learner is a common thread. Right. For sure. Good. Excellent. And it looks like Peter has his hand up, um, digital hand up. So <laughs> Peter, if you want to go ahead and ask your question. For sure. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for your time today, Michelle. It was um, really uplifting. You know what I mean? It can be kind of like you're talking about kind of a slog, but taking a step back and being able to, um, yeah, learn a little bit is, is great. So my question is, um, you know, you talk a little bit about instead of the push, it's more of a pull, like like an inbound marketing kind of um, strategy. So I can get really easily overwhelmed with, okay, if I'm going to do inbound, that means that I need to be creating content and I just get really easily overwhelmed. So I'm wondering if you have a, a good place to start or maybe a resource that you like for developing those sort of piece by piece um, pieces of content. I'm a content marketer, so that's where I'm that's right. Okay. Well, yep. two, two things. It doesn't always have to be like original content, like a blog that you're writing. You can start commenting on other people's. You can share an article. Um, and when you share that article, don't just share the article, like write one or two sentences that A, shows you read it. B, ask a question because LinkedIn favors engagement. So the more engagement you can get on posts, the better. So don't always think of it as, oh my God, what am I going to write about? You know, it doesn't always have to be that. You can certainly add that, you know, and you can certainly, LinkedIn allows you to, to post an article. Um, in fact, if you do do that, I would maybe do a twist on like, what, what are the challenges that you see in content marketing and how have you overcome them? Or so, like something that shows your expertise. Um, or shows your unique viewpoint on content marketing um, is another way. But I would say don't always think it's the long form, um, it, the long form post. It, it can be comments as well. Yeah, just being consistent about it too, for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Show up. <laughs> and looks like Mary Beth um, posted a question in the chat. And it's, what if you want to move out of marketing and PR into a different department? What would be your suggestions for that? So look at the common um, transferable skills. So it depends on the, the department that you're going to. If you want to type that in the chat, Mary Beth, go ahead. Um, but those soft skills, building relationships, communicating, um, process improvement, those, okay, going to training and development. Okay, so PR, have you ever done presentations? You got to present for training and development. So that's what I mean by look at those transferable skills. Um, what, and, and highlight those in your resume. Um, and start talking to people that are in training and development and asking them, here's my background. What, what do you see from my background? Like have an informational interview. What do you see from my background that can be useful to someone doing your job? Good question. Excellent. Any other questions? Going once? Going twice? No? Okay. <laughs> well, thank you again, Michelle. This was such a wealth of information. I know we all really appreciate it. And I'll pass it back to you, Anna. Great. Thank and you. Thank you so much, Michelle. That was great. And I was texting one of the people that's in the audience saying, oh, that's a great idea. Oh, that's another great idea. So that is awesome. And um, I wanted to just say that, again, you've really brought forward to me the importance of a career fitness strategy. Um, marketing yourself, that's hard for a lot of us to do. Um, the importance of a career plan, even when you might not even, you know, be looking right now, um, you know, and then you must stand out from the crowd. So really try to put some effort into what's unique about you. So thank you. Um, I think it's kind of rejuvenating for a lot of us and hopefully that's what people walk away with today. 
And I do want to again thank our sponsors and our supporters. And again, thank you, Taylor, for hosting us. And uh, anyone who has video needs, please consider Financial Potion. I'm going to be starting to work on a project with her for a client. So please feel free to reach out to her. And then, of course, our supporters who allow our board members to put in uh, the time and the hard work. And just real quick, next two um, events. June 10th is our next one on a Thursday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And we are doing our, you know, state of the Hispanic, uh, Arizona's Hispanic market. So it is the Datos overview and it's kind of a mini Datos report. And Monica, uh, I always say it wrong, Villabo Villabos. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the president and CEO of the Arizona Hispanic Chamber. She always has a wealth of information. So please do join us. And again, this, uh, this market could be low hanging fruit for a lot of you. And June 23rd, which is Wednesday, lunchtime again, uh, Ra Rami Kala, the president of Point in Time Studios, he's gonna be talking about XR and beyond. And XR, anyone who needed to look it up, like me, is extended reality, which includes virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality. And again, um, he's even seen so much more need for it during COVID time. So this is a good time to be talking about it again. So I hope you join us for all of this. And last but not least, Spectrum, June, uh, July 21st. And uh, just to give everyone on this call a heads up, we are gonna change the deadline for submissions from May 10th to May 24th. So please get your submissions in. Uh, we're gonna have a great event and we are gonna be awarding 2019 and 2020 work since uh, it was canceled last year. So we hope you'll join us. And thank you again, Michelle. This was great. I'm going to email everyone tonight with that link that if you wanna connect with Michelle uh, for that offer that she gave you, that'll be just a really good reminder. And then of course, we'll forward the video um, and presentation to you. But thank you again, everyone for joining us and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Have a great rest of your day.